To be honest, the last year was um, all the season in the end was a surprise for me. I could not imagine this. I even didn't plan to go to the World Cup final. But um, beginning of, of the year, Vitic, like, uh, the, he turned uh, a gear, you know, so yeah, he was jumping better than ever. And uh, yeah, in only four shows, I got all the points I needed. I even doubted about go or not to the final because the horse was already 15 and, and all these points. But uh, yeah, in one moment I, I, I told if he's jumping like this, this is my real chance, you know. So I went there, the horse was, was jumping like fantastic and yeah, we were really close to the medal, you know. For one second in the last round I lost the medal, but uh, still I'm proud about what we did. We often hear it said it's harder to watch than it is to ride. And last year in Omaha, we saw the frustration in the kiss and cry area when Yuri just missed out with Vitiki on a podium finish from his son, who really did show his grief at his dad just missing out on a top three finish. My son, he's really, he's more than a son, he's a really good friend, you know. We, are, we have a really good connection. He lives this passion also. He's, really fanatic about. He was really competing from the Kiss and Cry, not only watching, you know, so... And uh, I, I think all this makes him learn a lot and uh, get uh, experience that uh, he's going to bring, not only for the sport, but for life. Yuri Mancia, he's in bright yellow. You can't miss him in the same way that you can't miss the Brazilian football team. But this weekend, it's not about colour, it's about points. He's come here on a horse that already jumped clears in the first round in Oslo and Helsinki, and he needs a few more points to get to his fourth Longin FEI World Cup final in Riyadh in April. And so this weekend, this class here in Amsterdam is absolutely vital because there are only two other opportunities after this weekend to get points at a Longin qualifier. I am in a moment of my career where my two main horses, Vitic and Alphonse, they are getting old. So now it's time to push and start to build up the new ones. And uh, this kind of shows, uh, they have uh, different uh, atmosphere, different uh, stress. So I always think it's really important to bring them to this kind of, of important shows, yeah. Here I have my old friend Alphonse, the one I jumped at the Olympics, the one I jumped at the World Championship. He is doing really, really well all these Grand Prix World Cups. He was second in one of the Grand Prix in Basel, and he is planning to go to the World Cup Grand Prix on Sunday. And here I have my best friend Vitiki. <laughs> the horse that has a long, long history with me. Uh, last year he, he was fourth place in the World Cup final. Unfortunately, after he had some problems with his frogs, stupid problem, but difficult to fix it. So we lost quite a long time to, to find the solution. And then in his comeback, he won the, the championnat in Basel and did really well the Grand Prix in, in Leipzig. We had two mistakes, but uh, jumped really good. So I hope Alphonse can make the points this week. Then we go with both to Gothenburg and hopefully we go dividing a bit the, the, the effort in the World Cup final with both. I know I could be already qualified if he was a little bit more fit end of the year. I also didn't plan so much with this one. Uh, for a moment when my mare got injured last year, I, I told I could even not go to the indoor shows because, you know, the old horses were a bit complicated cases, but one moment to the other, they, 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 they came to the good direction. So obviously I want to do well, obviously I want to go to the final. But I'm so happy that they are fit again and um, there is a long season, Olympic season coming on. So yeah, I don't feel this pressure. I just want to do as, as good as we can this week and, and we are well prepared. I think we, we, we will do well. Behind every good rider, there is a good team. But behind every good horse, there's an excellent group. And these horses don't come to these World Cup finals and perform in the way that Yuri's or any other riders perform without the expertise and the love and affection that the grooms give to these lovely horses. 
It's, it's a really team work, no? Uh, obviously the groom is one of the most important uh, pieces of, of uh, this. But uh, yeah, all the, the, the logistic uh, uh, work, also blacksmith, vet, a, a physiotherapy, it's, it's so much work uh, uh, involved, no, to, to, to do this one, one minute and a half. So the groom, because they are so uh, much together with me and with the horses, they, they become really a part of uh, the result, no, like uh, more than everybody else. But uh, like I said, in the end of the day, it's, it's much more work than the people can imagine, no, to, to try to do one minute and a half perfect. Jumping Amsterdam is now an established venue for the Longines series. It's one of the best shows on the European circuit and the fans really back that up. They've had a sellout crowd here every day this week for all the dressage and the jumping. 6,000 people and I'm sure we'll see it during the World Cup go absolutely mad for all the riders that come in to compete for the Longines qualifier. This is not going to be a walkover for anybody. We've got last year's winner, Julien Epiard with Donatello Dorge. We've got Max Kuhner for Austria. You've got Jörv Ruling flying the flag for the hosts here in Amsterdam. And of course, you've also got Daniel Coyle with Legacy. He won eight days ago in Leipzig. And Yuri Mansur has had a really good week. He's had two top 10 finishes already. So coming into the qualifier with QH, Alfonso, Santa Antonio, it's, he really looked as if he was one of the favorites to go into the jump off. To be honest, I think uh, since the first course, there was Alfonso in the warm up and then 50-50 straight away, he had a good uh, placement. I, I, I don't know, all, all was good, you know, this is, is a good feeling when you go to the show and straight away you feel your horses are good and you did the right plan. So every horse was fit in the right competition and they jumped good every competition. Welcome to the 12th of the 14 legs of the Western European League and all the roads lead to Riyadh. Time is running out to get points for the athletes. Early on in the first round, it looked as if the time allowed of 73 seconds was going to play a real part. In fact, it did. Angelika Augustin Zanatelli, riding her great partner, Kalinka van der Nachtel. Just the one to go. It's going to be close on the clock. She's just got one time penalty. You really do need to keep the pressure on because that looked quite a quick round. Michael van der Vleuten with the very exciting 10-year-old Darko Stallion, a Bailey Van Het, blew us off. It's tight in there for a big horse like that, but brilliantly ridden by Michael, down to the last. 73 seconds is the time allowed. He should be all right, it'll be tight, but I think he'll be okay. No, he's not! It's one time penalty, one hundredth of a second over the time allowed. Now the first of two for Brazil, the man in yellow, Yuri Mansur, riding the 17-year-old gelding. QH Alphonse, Santa Antonio. Yuri's round was going so well. He was chasing that difficult time allowed of 73 seconds. He came down to the penultimate fence, the double. It was a short four strides. He didn't quite get the, the distance that he wanted and he took a pole out on four faults. He also just tipped over the 73 seconds and finished on five penalties. Everything was good. I think I did a good round. Uh, the horse jumped fantastic. Maybe I over protect him in this, this jump where he had a mistake. It was not a technical mistake, it was more mental mistake because in the beginning of the career of this horse, he could do this mistake in front bar of that ox where I knocked the back bar. And unfortunately, our, our dream to come back to the World Cup this year is finished because, yeah, we cannot make points enough anymore. So. Unfortunately, this year we cannot go to Riyadh. Seven out of the 40 got through to the second round. Three of them representing the Netherlands here in Amsterdam. First in was Jörv Reeling, one of the heroes of the sport in the Netherlands. He went clear, 40.4, so top of the leaderboard. It was then a few riders later that Will and Grave came in. 
Another one for the Netherlands, another huge hero. They went mad. Perfectly judged. 40.4 he's got to beat. He comes to the Oxer. The Longin Oxer, 38.33. Willem Grev salutes the crowd as he goes into the lead with Highway TM. What a performance. Then came in Daniel Coyle with Ariel Grange's lovely mare, Legacy. They were victorious and very quick in Leipzig eight days ago. That did not change here in Amsterdam. They took nearly three seconds of William Grave's time. Very tight indeed. He now chases down to the last. He's up on the clock. He's up and over the last. In 35.45. Absolutely incredible scenes here. Daniel Coyle and Legacy go into the lead. It just left Dennis Lynch also for Ireland to jump with Vista Grand, but it wasn't to be for them. They had a couple of fences down. So Daniel Coyle and the wonderful legacy. Now, two consecutive Longin FEI World Cup qualifiers. He's on his way to his second Longin FEI World Cup final with legacy. He was 26th last year. This year, he has said legacy is in the best form of her life. Can Daniel Coyle, riding Ariel Granger's legacy, win the Longin FEI World Cup final in Riyadh?